Hey, I'm John Thielen. Today on Fish Ed, we're going to spend an afternoon pulling some spinners. And, you know, it's midsummer, and this is one of my favorite times of year because the fish are aggressive. They're easy to find on the sonar, and, and they'll chase baits. And, and I don't know that there's a better bait to get them to chase midsummer than a good old fashioned spinner. And that's what we're going to fish today. And we're going to show you some tips and tricks to help you catch more fish next time you're out pulling spinners. Stay right where you're at. Fish Ed's coming up. There he is, huh? I thought I heard something. <laughs> I just, I literally just said, should be right in here. <laughs> we, here's what happened. We drove over these fish, and Steve's spinner rig over here got smacked. And he took off the back of the crawler. So, you know, basically all we did, oh, nice eye to start too. Great fish to start. All we did, was just turn around, oh, look at that. Oh, no. Yeah, here we go. Let's try that again. There we go. All we did is just turn this thing around. And I turned it around plain and simply because that that fish wasn't alone. The fish you hit, that was great. I mean, that guy right there, he had buddies with him. Now, I don't, we don't know if this is the one that hit first when we went through here or if there was another one. But, but I'll tell you what, there were fish stacked up right here at about 23 feet. And one of the neat things about pulling spinners because you're using a heavier weight, we are able to just pull right up here. I just sped it up a little bit, whipped around, came right back through that same area. You know, that's an awesome start. That's one thing about spinner fishing though. It's an aggressive tactic. You're moving fast. It allows you to make fast adjustments and it triggers strikes like that one right there. That's, a, that's an awesome start. Oh, there's one right there. Look at what I'm doing back here. <laughs> I, got, I got the spinner box out. And the spinner box is out because I was just thinking to myself, man, I've gone a pass or two without being touched. And you know what? I gotta change color. I gotta change something, right? I turn over and the rod's doubled. <laughs> I mean that I'll take that any day of the week. I'm just gonna step forward here, Steve, and let you All right. scoop from over there. We slid out a little bit deeper here. You know, we've lost all of our wind. This is a pretty good fish. I'm gonna take it fairly easy on him. But we lost, lost the wind we started with here a little while ago. So I've just slid out a little bit deeper here. And as simple as that, we've seen a few more fish on the graph and I hadn't been being bit. So I went to change color. And as soon as I did that, all of a sudden, that guy snaps on the color I had in from the get-go. That's a great eye right there. Let's get him out of there before he gets tangled up. Look at that. Awesome fish right there. You know, one of the cool things about spinners though, is the ability to do what I was thinking about there. And, and that is to interject color into the whole thing. And I'm a huge believer that if you can interject color, look at that. If you can interject color, you can really dial in a pattern with fish. And that's a great eye right there. We'll get him out of here, but you know, I'm sitting on a perch pattern to start the morning or to start the afternoon here. And Steve's using more of an alewife pattern. And now they've each been hit once. We've got a fish in on each one of them. So, you know, maybe it was depth, maybe it was speed. Maybe it wasn't color. Maybe just getting out here into that right spot really made the difference. So here's what we'll do. We'll go back up and we'll make another pass right through here before I change that color. Otherwise, when I do change that color, I'll change it to a totally different end of the spectrum. I'll show you what I was actually getting out. I was getting out something with a lot of pink in it. And the other one I was kind of tearing out of the packages was something with a lot of shad, shiner, silver type stuff in it, chrome stuff, mainly because the body of water on, we're on today has a lot of shiners in it. But the other thing is just going to the total opposite other end of the color spectrum than what I was with this perch. And sometimes that can make a big difference, especially in clear water. But now it might've just been speed. It might've been depth. So, so we'll go back. We'll make another pass through here at that same little bit slower speed, that same little bit deeper depth and see if that's really all it is. And if it doesn't matter when it comes to color, some days it'll go back and forth and you know, we might have it right. Yeah. We'll, we'll know in a few minutes here after we make the next pass back the other way. 
you know, there's all kinds of different spinner options out there when you're looking to purchase spinners. And there's a lot of guys that time themselves. You know, I, I used to be one of those guys. I used to time myself. And I want to show you what we're using today. I don't, I don't time myself anymore. There's just no need to because of what we're using today. This is the Lindy spinner and crawler harness. I got a little weeds on that, so it's probably a good time I pulled it up anyway to clean it up. But here's what's, here's what's special about this crawler harness, this spinner rig. Number one, 14 pound fluorocarbon. So the fish don't see it and it's tough. And with all these zebra, and zebra mussel infested lakes that we're fishing nowadays, that fluorocarbon is so tough it can handle bouncing along some of them zebs and not getting nicked up. And I think that's important. I don't want to lose a fish because all of a sudden I just end up with a weak spot in my line that I don't know about. But then we also have a really cool setup here. Number two hooks, and, and those number two hooks are a good solid hook, and, and I'm a huge believer that if you don't got a good hook, you don't, you don't got a good rig. But then the other thing is, a whole bunch of different great colored blades, they're all holographic, but the back of every one of these blades is chrome. And because of that, it's gonna flash all the different colors that you see in these bead patterns. So every one of these bead patterns is different, and they're all specified toward looking like a bait fish. This one here's a shad. You know, Steve's using alewife. Earlier today, I was using bluegill and perch, but they all have chrome on the back and it gives that flash. And I really believe that's a big deal because a lot of times these fish, they're just following it. So if they see that flash back there and they see those colors in that flash, it can make a big difference. And all of a sudden they turn it on and they come up and grab it. This Lindy spinner and crawler harness package is just a lot higher quality. And, and that's why you can use the same rig year in and year out. I mean, there's, there's rigs I have twisted up on those Lindy riggers that I used last year and I'll use them again this year because they're that durable. I think I got a fish though. Do you? Yep. Look at that. <laughs> so there, I come up shallow. There they are. And what happens? Awesome. We'll add that to the, to the roll call for the day, huh? Yep. Feel like a good one? It's not too bad. Good. It's like I said, clouded up again, they moved up. Yeah, that's, that's what happened. Just got a little cloudy and all of a sudden they slipped up a little shallower. Ooh, that nice fish. Bad. Yep. Little more, little more, ooh. Right there, <clears throat> got him. Awesome fish, bud. I'll let you go ahead and grab them right over there. There you go. Awesome. Great fish. That durability I was talking about though, you need pliers? Yeah. That durability I was talking about, here's a great example of it. You can see that hook is down this walleye's mouth and that 14 pound fluorocarbon is going to hold up. And that's a big deal because realistically that fish fights all the way up. He's turning, twisting and turning all the way up. Those teeth are rubbing on that line. And you know what? He doesn't cut it. And he doesn't cut it because it's a good solid line. It's that 14 pound floral. So, nice fish. Here we go. All right. Let's get us another one. Maybe we gotta be up here a little shallower. There's one right there. Got him. I think he's hooked up pretty good, bud. Oh yeah. There's another one on the screen right there. This feels like a good fish. In fact, I'm pretty sure this is a good fish. I'm gonna slow this down just a little bit. Color change. That was it. That might have been. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> I'd love to tell you that's it. And I'd love to tell you I'm right. But a lot of days it's just that experimentation. You know, you look at it, and we, we talked about it earlier. Today's the first day of the year with spinners. You know, you gotta, you gotta experiment and come up with the right colors. You gotta come up with the right speeds, the right depths. There's really a lot you gotta do Oh, nice fish. Oh yeah, it's a big walleye. There's really a lot you gotta do on those first couple days of the year. Oh, he's not hooked real no, good. We're gonna get that. one crack. Look at that. Awesome fish. But that first time of the year out doing this, nice. there's really a lot you gotta do. There's a lot of changes you gotta make if you wanna catch them and catch them consistently throughout the day. And we've been able to do that and a lot of that is just the plain and simple fact that we pulled spinners, we gave them something aggressive. We did it probably before everybody else. <laughs> everybody I've seen today is Lindy Reagan are moving real slow. But man, that water, like Steve said, hits that 70s. I mean, it's jumped from 67 to 68, all the way up to 71 now. We're finishing our day up 71 degrees. Walleyes like that, they got one thing on their mind, they're chasing and eating. Awesome way to wrap up a great day.